Hey, um, welcome back to another one of our cycling session analysis classes. This one's a bit different because we're actually going to go through the data of six athletes here. Um, and the reason we can do this is because we actually have six Moxie sensors and we actually run these um, classes on a, on a group setting. Um, so I know that you've seen videos where we've analysed one athlete at a time. But this video we're going to look at six athletes doing exactly the same workout exactly at the same time and compare and contrast their data. I think this is fascinating. I hope you do too. So here is the workout. This is a Monday night speed session and no doubt about it, the Monday night speed session is all very, very binary. You're either working really hard or you're resting, not a lot in between. And roughly, we probably do about five to 10 minutes worth of actual exercise in a 45 minute class after a after a warm-up so it's that sort of intensity so very very hard but lots and lots of rest it's really great for building vo2 and building all out speed and power so uh, these intervals are, are at 130 percent of ftp so pretty hard uh, the first set here are 15 seconds long with 15 seconds rest and the second set here are 10 seconds long with 10 seconds uh, with 15 seconds rest but we do more of them so you get more rest in relation to the interval. I know it looks a bit weird on this graph, but I promise you they're all the same. Um, let's turn on some data and let's see what we're looking at. So first of all, SMO2, saturation of muscle oxygen. And you can see this athlete here. It's a fairly elderly lady, very, very fit, very lean, very little body fat on her um, good power to weight ratio. Um, straight off the bat, literally desaturate straight away. Like this is only like 50% of FTP. It's not next to no load at all, but in a non-warmed up state, totally deprives herself of oxygen and is completely glycolytic, anaerobic through all of this warm up. Um, and then once the warm has finished, that's when her cardiovascular pulmonary system now wakes up, she's warmed up and she's got a good level of uh, oxygen saturation in that muscle. So we take this recovery and this is where we wanna start our event. So we go into these, and this lady desaturates very quickly. So muscle oxidative capacity, the ability to utilize oxygen is very, very high and her recovery is also very good. So every single interval, coming back, coming back, coming back. This spike here is where we took a rest and that's because we have three, three rules when we're doing this training here at MapDeck. And you should follow these twos if, you, if you're doing interval training. First, you do the full interval at the full intensity um, and that's great. If you can't do that, you then hit your power target, but do a shorter duration. And your third option is rest. So don't go about turning this resistance down to get through all the intervals. No, you hit your power targets. You hit your power targets for the full duration, or you don't do it at all. It's like Yoda, like do or do not type of things. So that's what she did. So she made a good decision here. Didn't think she'd be able to hit her power targets, took the rest, got that recovery in. You know, at this point, heart rate's high, um, respiratory rate is high, resaturated very, very quickly, got back into the workout, brilliant. Obviously, we've been very glycolytic, blood sugar will be going down, um, starting to get quite tired, but your body's responding and is starting to provide more oxygen. To it. Let's have a look at athlete number two, totally, totally different. So this athlete, very fit, competitor, very good, um, does a lot of training, does a lot of hours, Again, very lean, um, power to weight ratio is very good. And and look at this, the response is different. So this line you can see at the top here, this is heart rate. That's exactly what you expect. We go through the warm up, heart rate just creeps and creeps and creeps. Take that rest. And as we take that rest, we can see the corresponding difference. So on this one, going through the warm up, that saturation of muscle oxygen is just depleting, 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 and the recovery is instant. Second the load comes off, recovery happens, fantastic total hemoglobin this is as your cardiac system your heart rate is going up it's also delivering more hemoglobin to the muscle brilliant that's exactly what your body should be doing you know as you obviously as you're breathing harder and your heart's beating faster it should be supplying more blood to where it needs to go and that should be bringing more oxygen but of course we are also making the workout harder put the recovery in bang good resaturated state nowhere near as high as other athletes so this is their maximum saturation point and this time, through the intervals, look, just bit by bit, gradually bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down. Recovery is nowhere near as severe, um, but we don't desaturate all our oxygen in one go. It's not a complete, that's it, wiped out, and then recover. It's just 
gradually, gradually bringing it down. And the THB responds, you know, as heart rate creeps. So this is a sign of a really healthy body system doing its thing. This is your body recognizing that it needs more oxygen and it's diverting resources away from other parts of the body like shoulders or whatever doesn't need it and sending it to where it's needed to try and maintain oxygen supply. Because heart rate doesn't change very much. It goes up to about 167 here. And by the end of this, I think we're only at like uh, 168. So heart rate stays pretty static through this. Um, THB goes up and muscle saturation just goes down slowly. So brilliant. This is a sign of a really healthy body doing what it, it, it should be doing. Next athlete. So this is um, XFL runner, male, and um, sort of recovering from injury. So very, very fit, got a very sort of high VO2, very fit in his history, but obviously sort of injured and using the bike to stay fit. So he's come from that sort of a background again. And here we see a completely different response through the intervals. So this is um, muscle oxidative capacity desaturates very quickly in the first two intervals. So 30 seconds worth of work, muscle oxygen is pretty much depleted. That's it. And now he's just on a fully sort of glycolytic, very stays very, very low throughout the entire interval heart rate just climbing 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 but thb stays about the same so this athlete has a bit of a cardiac limitation where the heart the cardiac system is struggling to resupply uh, quickly enough but from his fell running background also has a very very high lactate tolerance so he's able to sustain this sort of time through that you know process in the lactate quick recovery exactly the same through here just set out a couple of intervals you know, really good, just enough recovery to come back and finish the workout. So really good decisions being made, perfect. So this is a another gentleman, pretty strong, fair, I'd say fairly novice cycling, but fit maybe, but generally speaking, just a good big strong guy who's finding his fitness on the bike, best way to describe it, I guess. So here we can see that oxygen saturation going down, takes a little while for his pulmonary and cardiac system to wake up to that, um, and again, because of that strength desaturates very very quickly under load and really doesn't see much of a recovery so again very strong high lactate tolerance high muscle oxidative capacity as in he just eats that oxygen straight away just gone but strength and <laughs> pure lactate tolerance brings him through the workout without a single missed interval um, so brilliant this sort of workout will really benefit this athlete by just keeping nudging that heart rate up and really challenging that cardiac system to deliver oxygen and get those lungs open and really power up. This is the sort of workout that's really going to help this athlete break through these fitness barriers because lactate tolerance will only get you so far. Uh, our next lady using this session probably as a really like a hit session if you like for for weight loss and general fitness. Probably the only hard session that she does. She rides a bit at the weekend. Um, and that's great you can send a totally different response so this is the response we get from someone who's generally a bit more untrained and you can see what her body is doing here so she's in totally the right class doing totally the right things making the difference to her life and making massive improvements heart rate going up doing what it should do thb going down that heart rate is really really struggling to provide that oxygen again just not familiar with doing this level of training so when we take the load off you get this flood <laughs> if you like of of oxygen um, so all the way through here her body is prioritizing thinking no I need oxygen in other places like my vital organs need oxygen more than that working muscle does you can't have it just yet um, and then when a heart rate is elevated then we get this flood of oxygen but then we have this problem where um, because she's not strong she's not a developed athlete yet the muscle oxidative capacity is fairly low so the mitochondria can't utilize um, all of that oxygen to oxidize fat and create energy so even though this looks quite high she's actually being quite glycolytic um, using up a lot of blood sugar to do these an actual fact probably suffering from processing the byproduct lactate and co2 um, because her bloodstream is actually quite full of oxygen. These are actually quite high levels. If you look at the screen there, it's like 70 odd percent, 72. It doesn't give an awful lot of a space for a two-way system to exist. Match this up with a bit of strength work. Great, it's only one session a week. Um, what a great thing to do. Didn't miss an interval, I don't think. Done the whole thing, superb, totally different approach. Finally, now we actually talked about this athlete on a previous video, the guy with the, the odd legs, <laughs> if you remember. 
big strong guy, one leg stronger than the other. Um, oxygen saturation goes down as we expect. Long delay, look how long it takes to get that recovery going uh, and THB to recovery as well. And this is probably where Andy was sitting up. I think he's um, also asthmatic, so I think he was taking an inhaler. So when we see these bumps here, it's normally when he's taking an inhaler and that's just opened up his lungs and you can see the difference that an inhaler makes. Again, a strong guy, mountain biker, um, desaturates very, very quickly. Lactate tolerance is just through the workout hardly. Um, once after he's through that first interval, hardly any assistance at all from his uh, aerobic system, you know, um, it's obviously still working, it's still providing energy, but you know, it's, um, it, it's maxed out. It's, um, and heart rate really doesn't move much at all either. Through the second one, this is really where you show that effect of uh, bonking essentially, because through this lactate tolerance, the blood sugar is just, um, just being depleted and depleted and depleted. And we actually start to get um, a bonk effect going on here. Now, we actually did turn his resistance down, which in hindsight was probably a mistake on my part. Um, let me explain because I said at the start we do three three ways of attempting this now Andy was at the back of the room sort of like go turn me down turn me down and my instant reaction was to turn it down what I should have said um, was just top rest let that recovery happen as you can see you know oxygen saturation came in everything just settled down then was feeling good he finished off the workout with a couple of extra intervals great I, I find that fascinating and when you're a coach in the room with six athletes uh, all training on the same workout but seeing very very different results in how their body is generating uh, producing energy to to meet that that work demand um, it's brilliant because now as a coach we can really give fantastic advice and feedback as to how to approach that workout what workout might work best for them i hope you found it fascinating as well um, if not just give us a thumbs down i won't do another one if you liked it um, I'll try and do more. I'll try and keep it short. All right. Thanks for listening.